Hey everyone, Renee here from O'Reilly Auto Parts to show you how to change a serpentine belt, tensioner, and idler pulleys. Proper belt tension is critical for the correct operation of all your accessories, and it's the belt's wedging force under tension that creates friction and transfers torque from the crank to your accessories. If the tensioner isn't supplying enough tension, or if the belt is worn down, the belt may slip and create excessive heat or belt noise. Keep in mind that the belt, tensioner, and idler pulleys were designed as a system. Since all these components have similar lifespans, manufacturers recommend replacing all of them at the same time so the system can function like new. Today I'll be working on this 2005 Jeep Liberty, but the process will vary a little from one vehicle to the next. So as always, know the specifics for your vehicle before getting started. If you're not completely comfortable doing this yourself, we'd be happy to recommend a professional technician in your area. Once you've got your materials together, here's what you'll do. Turn off your vehicle, lift the hood, and let the engine cool down. The belt will be the first thing to come off and the last thing to go back on. So find the routing layout of your vehicle's serpentine belt. Each model will be different. On our Jeep, we've got a diagram of the belt routing here on the radiator support, but you can usually find the layout in your owner's manual or somewhere in the engine compartment. For an easy reference, take a picture of the diagram so you'll have it handy. In some cases, you may have to make a sketch of the belt routing. Your diagram should indicate where the tensioner is located. Use your ratchet and socket to rotate the belt tensioner to relieve tension on the belt, and slip the belt off one of the pulleys. If you need more leverage, use a breaker bar. If your vehicle has a manual tensioner, you'll tighten the bolt to keep it in place once tension is relieved. Once the belt is slipped off, you can remove your ratchet from the tensioner. Now, remove the belt completely. To remove the tensioner, you'll remove the bolt or bolt securing it. Keep those bolts in case your new tensioner doesn't include them. Install your new tensioner by bolting it in place. Torquing the bolts to manufacturer's specifications. On our vehicle, the idler pulley is on the tensioner itself, but an idler pulley can be separate from the tensioner and is typically held in place by a single bolt. To remove one, hold the pulley steady with one hand and remove the belt with your ratchet. Install your new pulley and torque it to manufacturer specifications. Good belt to pulley contact is necessary for the belt to create the friction needed to transfer the power to the accessories. Make sure your pulleys are clean before installing your new belt. Use your diagram as a reference and start routing your new belt from the bottom. Get the belt looped onto all but one pulley. You'll need your ratchet to turn the belt tensioner enough to get the belt around the last pulley. Once the belt is in place, check it at each pulley to make sure it's properly seated to avoid abnormal wear. Now you can remove your ratchet. Start up your engine and take a look from a safe distance to make sure the belt is staying seated the way it should be with the vehicle running. And that's it. You'll find everything you need for this and other jobs at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or OReillyAuto.com. Our DIY videos are designed to help answer questions we get in our stores every day. If you found this one helpful, subscribe to our channel to get all the latest. We'll see you again soon.